Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service Podcasts. In this podcast, we'll talk about the European Commission's proposal to steer the EU maritime sector towards decarbonisation. Want to know more? Get on board. Maritime transport is a key economic sector in Europe. It makes up three quarters of external trade and almost one third of internal trade volumes. And every year, around 400 million passengers embark or disembark in EU ports. But ships pollute. In 2018, they generated over 13% of all greenhouse gas emissions from transport. And while this is substantially less than the 71% generated by road transport, the problem is that at present, the maritime sector relies almost entirely on fossil fuels, mainly heavy fuel oil. In 2018, the International Maritime Organization, the UN's body regulating international shipping, set itself the goal to reduce average carbon intensity, which is the CO2 per tonne mile by at least 40% by 2030 and by 70% in 2050. As well as to cut total emissions by at least 50% by 2050 compared to 2008 and phase them out as soon as possible. That's right. Now, meeting the 2030 reduction target can still be done with the current technology, combining measures such as lower speeds, improvements in operational efficiency through data analytics, limited use of low-carbon fuels and energy-efficient designs. But meeting the 2050 goals is a different game and will require a global transition to alternative fuels and energy sources. So how are we going to do this in Europe? As part of the Fit for 55 package in July 2021, the European Commission presented the Fuel EU Maritime Proposal, accompanied by an impact assessment. The main goal is to increase the use of low-carbon fuels by introducing limits to the greenhouse gas intensity of energy used on board ships and an obligation to use onshore power supply or zero-emission technology in EU ports. Marketa Papa from the European Parliamentary Research Service gives us some more details. The proposed regulation introduces increasingly stringent limits on carbon intensity of the energy used by ships, which would oblige them to use alternative fuels. It starts in 2025 with a modest 2% reduction until eventually achieving a 75% cut in 2050. This would apply to all big commercial vessels, which are the most polluting ones, regardless of their flag. It covers all energy used when the ship is in or between EU ports, but only 50% of the energy used on ships departing from or arriving to an EU port on voyages to third countries. Shipping companies would be responsible for compliance and common principles for monitoring, reporting and verification would be introduced. The Fuel EU Maritime proposal is part of a package of proposals presented by the Commission to decarbonise the transport sector and achieve the objectives of the Green Deal. Here's the European Commissioner for Transport, Adina Valian. The Fuel Aviation, Fuel EU Maritime and Alternative Fuels Infrastructure Regulation. All present a ticket to economic growth. They will create a market for sustainable alternative fuels and put in place the right infrastructure to get zero emission vehicles on our streets and in our seas and skies. So what are the views of stakeholders? Stay with us. European ship owners support the idea of using cleaner fuels but propose to make EU fuel suppliers instead of shipping companies responsible for meeting the new fuel standards. The environmental NGO Transport and Environment warns that if no green fuels are available for refueling in European ports, the switch to low-carbon fuels cannot happen. We spoke to the organization's expert in sustainable shipping, Delphine Gozillon. As the draft proposal stands, ships will be encouraged to switch from one fossil fuel to another, liquefied natural gas. LNG could represent as much as a quarter of European shipping fuel mix by 2030. To correct this, fuel EU maritime must include a minimum quota of e-fuels use by 2030. World Bank experts have also questioned the long-term environmental benefits of using LNG as shipping fuel. 
and recommend public support to focus on the development of zero carbon bunker fuels instead. In the European Parliament, the proposal is being followed by the Committee on Transport and Tourism. Here's the rapporteur, Jurgen Warborn. The fuel EU maritime regulation aims at creating a level playing field. No matter what flag ships carry, they should be subject to the same rules. We do not want loopholes or avoidance practices. And that is why we target the ships in this climate proposal and not fuel suppliers. Because a fuel supplier scope would mean we could only regulate suppliers in Europe and ships could easily bunker dirtier and cheaper fuels outside Europe. Want to know more? Check out Marketa Papa's full policy brief on the EPRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.